Hello student, welcome to today's lesson. This is biology lesson for grade 12. Nowadays, we will see the new unit ecology. Under this lesson, we will see recycling matter in an ecosystem. Student, at the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the need of matter recycling in an ecosystem. And again describe carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, and the phosphorus cycle. Student, do you know what is the term recycling and the importance of recycling in an ecosystem? Well done. As we have seen as the earlier lesson, recycling is an important role that microorganisms carry out in an ecosystem. If the action of microorganisms over recycling become encounter certain gap, ecosystem may be polluted. Mineral elements found in living organisms may not be recycled here. So, microorganisms are very important organisms in the process of recycling. No any other organism carry out the process of recycling unless microbes. So, ecology is a field of biology that deals about the interaction between living organism with living organism, living organism with their physical environment. In ecology, no biotic and abiotic factor are independent of each other. Rather, they are interdependent to each other. What makes them to become interdependent or interact with each other is the process of recycling. Well done. So, recycling is the process of using mineral elements continuously without any gap again and again in an ecosystem. Ecosystem, which is the sum total of biotic and abiotic factor, is a changing unit. It can change it. There are so many factors that determine the type of ecosystem. In ecosystem, all organisms, living factor, abiotic one, and they again the living factor interact. This interaction may be when the organism respire. It may be when the organism breathes. It may be when the organism die. It may be when the organism decomposed. So, recycling is the very important process of interacting organism together in ecosystem. Well done. Recycling may be seen in two main ways. One is the action that we mean bidirectional. Bidirectional means once an organism becomes die, the mineral element that is found in them become passed away. The mineral element that is found in plant or animal get available for another organism by the action of microorganism. Only microorganism act over bidirectional one. Whereas another type of cycling is unidirectional cycle. Unidirectional means there is no contribution of microorganism here. There is no action of microorganism over here. Microorganism may not be considered as a factor, but it is a follow, one directional follow. One thing that can not be recycled but transduced from one level to another is energy. Energy never recycled, but transferred from one level to another level. Based on this one, it may be gain energy, it may be loss. But mineral element can be recycled in an ecosystem continuously. Nitrogen, 
carbon, phosphorus, sulfur are important mineral elements. For example, if we see this diagram here, there is an ecosystem. In ecosystem, there is living organism. In ecosystem, there is a living organism where they can be recycled. They can be recycled. If an organism become die, microorganism become available, release something to the environment by taking some as a food and release to that of the ecosystem. But energy, once energy captured from the solar radiation, from the source, it can lost in form of heat and they again replaced in form of light. In form of light energy. Energy from solar radiation replaced in form of light energy released in form of this one. No energy back to that of its stars. But once carbon containing plant or animal become die, microbiome make it available for that of the next by the action of recycling. Recycling can be seen in this manner so. Well done. In the system, bacteria in the fungi are the two important ecologically in the ecosystemically very important microorganism in the process of recycling. They contribute great in recycling. We can have so many products from bacteria and the fungi industrially. We can have so many products and again so many advantages from bacteria and the fungi from here. They are decomposer feeder. They can feed by saprobiotic means of feeding. When we say saprobiotic, they can break down complex organic molecule, releasing into absorbable one. They absorb in the product of digestion and release something to that of the environment or ecosystem. The system of their digestion is by secreting enzyme. This enzyme is said to be breaking down enzyme or hydrolytic enzyme. Here, when they carry out this one, they break down complex organic molecule found in the living organism into smaller part and absorb in the product of digestion from here. Student, remind that microorganism doesn't carry out the system of recycling for sake of our benefit. They carry out naturally for their own benefit to obtain their own food. And again, simultaneously, they release something to the ecosystem from where that we can benefit. Well done. The system by which they can carry out this recycling is by carrying out extracellular digestion. To mean extracellular digestion, they move to that of the area where recycled matter can be found. Where dead plant, where dead animal, having mineral element found, we mean this type of digestion is said to be extracellular. Most type of heterotrophs carry out this type of digestion. When the enzyme secreted or moved from the site of production to somewhere to carry out their activity. So, microorganism can be carry out this system of recycling this manner. Well, then, let me see some type of mineral elements that can be recycled in our ecosystem. Carbon. Carbon is the most important atom. We are made from an assemblage, combination of organic and inorganic molecule. One atom that is found in a life in formation of organic molecule and inorganic molecule is carbon. By that we say carbon is an essential for carbon-based life formation. If carbon cycle encounter certain gap, carbon-based life formation may be encounter certain gap. By that, there are so many processes in the bacteria involved in recycling carbon. For example, the one most important process in carbon cycle is photosynthesis. I hope you know what the by means photosynthesis to mean. It is a process by which green plants make their own organic food. Here, photosynthesis in the process of carbon cycle it is involved in capturing atmospheric carbon, fixing of carbon from the atmosphere in form of carbon dioxide here to make organic molecule. 
carbon is fixed here. Fixation of carbon in form of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Whereas, reversely, there is respiration here. When we say respiration, it is a combustive process. It is an exergonic process, considered as a catabolic process, a process that is involved in breaking of larger organic molecules to release carbon in form of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, which is reversed to photosynthesis. Where here, the carbon that is accumulated in form of organic molecule by the process of photosynthesis become immobilized in food chain in tropical level as a means of feeding in the assimilation. Let's say here, green plants make up their own organic molecule by capturing atmospheric carbon dioxide here. They can capture or fix here. Green plants become found here. This can be transferred in tropic level. This can be transferred. A process by which it can transfer from producer to that of the next or primary consumer is said to be feeding or assimilation. Feeding assimilation activities very important in transferring or cycling of carbon in ecosystem. For example, let me identify this process. Let's see here. Carbon dioxide found in the atmosphere. The process of photosynthesis become captured here. And again, the process of respiration become released to the atmosphere. Respiration. Photosynthesis fixing atmospheric carbon dioxide in form of carbon dioxide, in form of carbon here, to make organic molecule, whereas respiration can be break down larger molecule to release carbon in form of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, capturing and releasing. Another very important process in carbon cycle is combustion. Combustion is when material become burned, it can release carbon in form of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, which is a reverse to that of photosynthesis again. If the amount of carbon dioxide released to the atmosphere become beyond maximum, maximum part per million of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, it can bring to that of a problem of warming, global warming. Warming of the atmosphere, which is very serious to ozone depletion. Ozone depletion can be encountered as a wrong cycling of carbon cycle. Well then, let me see this one. From that of combustion, from that of fossilization, carbon become released to the atmosphere, whereas photosynthesis become captured or that of fixed from that of the atmosphere. And again, upon uh, here, which can pass to that of the next tropic level, primary consumer, secondary consumer, high tropic level again here. Where again, there is action of decomposer. When they become die, either plant become die, animal become die, decomposer become released to that of the atmosphere again here. Here again, upon cellular respiration, it can break the organic molecule, which can release reversely to that of uh, the photosynthesis, carbon dioxide, uh, a carbon in form of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, releasing to the atmosphere, and again capturing to. Fixation of carbon here, releasing or emission of carbon is found here. Well done. So, carbon is very important if it is recycled. As we have seen in earlier episode, one critical activity and importance if recycled in ecosystem is nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen is very important in life in formation of protein, amino acid, phospholipid, structure of membrane, DNA, genetic material, RNA again, energy again, ADP again. If nitrogen may not be recycled, the cell may not be make amino acid, the cell may not be determined their genetic material, as DNA plus protein makes chromosomes. That. The cell may not be transform energy, 
as it is a part of nucleotide. Here, cell may not be made genetic material. Cell may not be uh, make a part of membrane, structural membrane. And again, energy transformation may be blocked here. So, microorganism in, in recycling of nitrogen are very critical. For example, we have seen there are so many steps, so many bacteria involved in nitrogen cycle. For example, here, there is nitrogen accumulated in the atmosphere. Nitrogen-fixing bacteria become fixed from the atmosphere in usable form, into ammonium form, where from that of dead matter, from animal or plant or somewhere, the composer or putrefying bacteria become secret is that of ammonium one. Here, this can be by two consecutive bacteria, nitromonas, which can oxidize ammonium into that of nitrite, and again finally into that of nitrate, which is usable form of nitrogen for the plants, by nitrobacter. There is nitrobacter, there is nitromonas bacteria here, where nitro, nitrate become absorbed or assimilated in, by the plant, which can transfer in a food chain. Then, animal can be make the uh, uh, nitrogen-based protein, and then after, there is another bacteria in the process that's involved in returning nitrogen into that of the atmosphere. This nitrogen fixing, increasing the amount of nitrogen in the soil, denitrifying bacteria, decreasing amount of nitrogen from the soil. So, microorganism is very important in determination of a makeup of genetic material, in determination of a makeup of cell membrane, in determination of energy transformation by recycling nitrogen. Wrongly again, if this become react to that of water again, it can contribute to that of acidic rain. Well then, another is phosphorus. Phosphorus, a usable form of phosphorus for the plant is phosphate. In phosphorus cycle, it follows the same cycle and it's the same procedure, just like that of nitrogen cycle. In here, microorganisms become add their phosphate to that of the soil. Then, animal feed from that of the plant that have a phosphate here, along a food chain in assimilation one, primary consumer, herbivore, later that can be continued in higher feeding system. Then after, this phosphate become accumulated in the structure of membrane again, in the structure of ATP again, in the structure of DNA again, in the structure of RNA. Upon this of this plant and the animal and the living matter, the phosphate that is found in ATP, phosphate that is found in structure of membrane, phosphate that is found in structure of DNA, phosphate that is found in structure of RNA, return it to the soil. Then after, as a result of weathering, Phosphate become a part of, it may be added to that of leaching, as a result of leaching, as a result of weathering, it may be added to that of the water body. Let I show you a two critical point here. If nitrate become eroded from that to the farmland, and the phosphate become eroded from that to the farmland, it can enter into water body, which can affect water ecosystem. The combination of this one, which can make algae to become grow faster and the light to become overcompeted, limitation of oxygen, contribute to that of pollution of water body. We, more, we call this one is a to be eutrophication. Compound of nitrogen and the phosphate can be bring to that a problem of eutrophication. Well done. Phosphorus life, uh, life cycle can be looked like this one. There is a feeding system here. Animal uh, plant phosphate found here, where a feeding system passes here. And again, it may be disturbed by water ecosystem when it is added to here. After so many years, phosphorus as a phosphate as a means of leaching or weathering, 
it may be form a part of sedimentary rock which is said to be a part of sedimentary rock it can be found in a rock so microorganism and they again ecosystem must be recycled phosphorus too as it make up so many structure of gene so many structure of energy so many structure of membrane too well then and another element that found in some amino acid just like methionine and again cysteine is sulfur there are so many process in the bacteria evolved in sulfur cycle the one bacteria is disulfovaberiobacteria that is involved in oxidation of or breaking decomposition of a sulfur that's found in form of amino acid in dead matter by releasing a rotten egg smell hydrogen sulfide here whereas photosynthetic sulfur bacteria which is equivalent to that of photolysis which releases sulfur photosynthetic sulfur bacteria then after there is again non photosynthetic sulfur bacteria which can use as an anti an intermediate sulfide that can releasing to that of sulfate which is a usable form for that of plants which can pass along a food chain the energy from that of the thunder energy from that of light reaction that can be very important in breaking down of the sulfate again here again it is very important in phosphorus cycle too photochemical reaction is and again it is very important in nitrogen cycle as i told you here again if some molecule become burned matter become burned they can increase the concentration of sulfur in the atmosphere which can form sulfur dioxide which contribute global warming to again so decomposer photosynthetic sulfur bacteria non photosynthetic sulfur bacteria are very important in recycling sulfur in our ecosystem which can transfer along a food chain if microbe cannot be recycled here the system of recycling may be affected to save life and the benefit from the advantage from this sulfur recycling must be carried out it must be reused well then and the one important point that we are going to see is water water is the most important inorganic molecule for existence of life by that we can say water is a life water is very important because of it is enormous property water can have so many property that can serve so many function for life life or cell can capable to survive for a days in absence of food but it is impossible to be survive with a short period of time in absence of water this indicates that as water is very important for a life and again water just like that of the else it can be recycled following its cycle water can be found in three main states in solid one ice and again in liquid form water part in gaseous part which we call vapor one here water can be found in underground one which we call aquifer then there is from uh, evaporation from large water body water can be evaporated from large body and again it can be transferred from that to plant and the animal and again water can be this transpiration and again as a result of evaporation become condensed together there is transpiration there is evaporation again this become condensed together once they condensed a water that can be in form of vapor that can be secreted from this one then become condensed in the back in form of precipitation in form of rainfall in form of percolation here again then it become recycled we have seen that under the property of water water need high energy to change its liquid form into gaseous one this indicates that while larger water mass or water body 
is not easily dried because it can allow the system of recycling. This is why we can get our rainfall and our water seasonally in the daily over a future generation. This is what is the importance of water cycle. Water is very important in home and again in outside, in industry, in everywhere, as raw material as everything. So recycling water is very important. Student, in our today's lesson, we have seen ecology as it is a science that deal an interaction between living organism with their physical environment. We have seen as an ecosystem is a dynamic unit of interaction between biotic and the biotic factor. And again, we have seen as microorganisms, especially fungi and the bacteria, are a key microorganism in recycling mineral elements in ecosystem. And again, we have seen some mineral element recycling, just like carbon, just like nitrogen, just like phosphorus, and again, just like sulfur. Additionally, how water can be recycled. This is all about today's lesson. In our coming lesson, we'll see a new topic, ecological succession. Until that, goodbye, students.